Yes, in this lecture we will study the charitable trusts. This is one of the main topics in the law of trust. If you want to access these PowerPoint presentations, you can access the website given below. The charitable trust may be created by express trust or the constructive trust or de facto trust. The express trust that we have studied in section or the chapter 2 of the trust ordinance. When you see section 5, subsection 1 of section 5 of the trust ordinance speaks about creation of trust in relation to the immoral property. At the same time, subsection 2 of section 5 of the trust ordinance speaks about creation of trust in relation to the movable property. When we read this section 5.1 subject to the provisions of section 107, that is a de facto trust that we are going to study now, no trust in relation to the immoral property is valid unless declared by last will of the author of the trust or of the trustee or by non-testamentary instrument in writing signed by author of the trust or the trustee and notarily executed. That is a very important point here. If it is in, in the trust is created in relation to the immoral property that should be executed notarially. Then the subsection 2 of section 5 of the trust ordinance, no trust in relation to the moral property is valid unless declared by last will of the author of the trust or the trustee or by non-testamentary instrument in writing signed by author of the trust or trustee unless the ownership of the property is transferred to the trustee by delivery. Then in relation to the immoral property, there is no requirement to be executed notarily. That is the express trust that we have already studied. Then the charitable trust also may be created by way of express trust. Then we will see the constructive trust. What is constructive trust? Constructive trust is arising not created, arising by operation of law. Chapter 9 of the trust's ordinance deals with constructive and result, uh, result trust, constructive trust or the result trust. Section 82 to 98, including uh, both uh, sections, deal with constructive trust. There are some transactions, those transactions amount to the constructive trust in certain circumstances that is known as constructive trust. But however, upon the declaration of court, the constructive trust comes into operation. Then what is known as de facto trust? De facto trust in the sense section 107 deals, uh, deals with de facto trust. For the purpose of understanding now, we can say that should be in relation, de facto trust should be in relation to the charitable trust and also it should be declared by court. In the absence of any requirement to create the trust. Suppose what we have studied in, in, in chapter 2, there are certain requirements to create the trust. 
charity may be social service minded people minded things but here when you talk about charitable trust charity is defined in section 99 subsection 1 if it falls within the section 99 subsection 1 within the scope of the section 99 subsection 1 then it is known as charity but it may be charitable trust may not be charitable trust because when you say charitable trust it should fulfill two distinct requirements the first one it should be charity especially as may be specified in subsection 1 of section 99 of the trusts ordinance in addition to that that should be for the public benefit or the section of the public public then it should be for the benefit of the whole public or it, it it may be benefit of section of public then only it is known as charitable trust non charitable trust or if it is non charity then definitely it is known as private trust even it is for charity it may be a private trust if it fails to satisfy the benefit of public a charitable trust is intended to benefit society as a whole and and or the um, or appreciable part of the society that's why we say that section of the public either it is it is for the benefit of the whole public or sometime it may be benefit of section of the public that's why here we mentioned that the charitable trust is intended to benefit society as a whole or an appreciable part of the society whereas the private trust is intended to benefit defined person defined person or defined class of persons then it is known as private trust but in sri lanka it is not the big issue but in english no it is a big issue at all because charitable trusts are exempted from taxation but here in sri lanka whether it is charitable or not it is subject to or it is liable to tax then the charitable trust are not subject to that aspect of rule against perpetuity when we study this uh, express trust we have studied rule against perpetuity the section 110 speaks about rule against perpetuity generally trust may be created for the for limited time but in the case of charitable trust there is no such limitation of time it can go forever that's why here section 110 subsection 5 provides that the restriction of that section shall not apply to charitable trust as defined by section 99 it's a very clear idea if it is a charitable trust 
there is no such limitation of time or restriction of time it can go forever charities are not bound by these rules charities are not bound by rule of perpetuities and it may therefore last forever there are many charities of considerable age which continue to operate thus where a gift is made of income from the particular fund to the charity in perpetuity it will never be possible to release the capital fund from the general fund because it always charity there is no limitation of time or restriction of time if you suppose if you deposit 10000 rupees in the bank account and create a trust the interest of 10000 rupees should be utilized for the relief of poverty in that case once you create that trust then you can withdraw the fund because there is no time limit well you can you can limit the time in the deed of trust in the terms and condition of the deed of trust you can limit the time at, but if you don't do that it will go forever in the case of tax we must see section 57 of the inland revenue act 2017 in terms of section 57 a trust whether it is charitable or not a trust shall be liable to tax separately from its beneficiaries a beneficiary is beneficiary of a trust shall be liable to tax on the income of the trust to which such beneficiary is entitled uh, for as individual then the charitable trust now we are talking about a charitable trust then the charitable trust is liable to tax the first place and second thing the beneficiary is also liable to tax but the distribution of resident and uh, resident trust shall be exempt in the hands of trusts beneficiaries now if the trust is created in sri lanka and the board of trustees all are from uh, sri lankan citizen then in the in it is known as resident trust in the case of redis, uh, resident charitable trust if anything distributed as a beneficial interest to the tribe beneficiaries then it is exempted from the uh, from the tax where a charitable institution provides institutionalized care for sick or needy and also where the commissioner general is satisfied that the cost of provision of such care is borne by such charitable institution then the chari- then the cha- then the commissioner general may reduce the tax payable but there is no such exemption of tax for these charitable institution as per inland revenue act 2017 now we will come back to these charitable trust since the section 6 of the trust ordinance is expressly subject to 107 or in other way we can say notwithstanding the provisions of 107 section 6 will apply because section 6 talks about reasonable certainty of certain matters specifically 
intention of the author, author of the trust intention of the author of the trust to create the trust purpose of the trust and beneficiary finally trust property and these are the matter should be specified with reasonable certainty intention on his part to create thereby a trust purpose of trust beneficiary and trust property but subject to 107 when you read this 107 there may be some exceptional circumstances given it may be argued that the 107 section 107 gives the court power to ignore the requirements of certainty of the beneficiary in relation to charitable trust that's very important part here it may be argued section 107 gives the court the power to ignore the requirements of certainty in relation to the beneficiary it is also relevant that the most of the decision uh, ignored the requirement specified in section 6 that the beneficiary must be indicated with reasonable certainty in a valid charitable trust because when you read this section 6 of the trusts ordinance subject to the provisions of section 5 and 107 a trust is created when the author of the trust indicates with the reasonable certainty by words or acts words or acts that we have already seen intention on his part to create the trust the purpose of the trust beneficiary and trust property when we see this certainty of reasonable certainty of certain matters specified in section 6 this is a way we can understand these are the matters must be very clear in the deed of trust if, if a person creates a trust then these all four matters must be very clear the purpose to intention to create the trust and beneficiary and trust property charitable trust will not fail for uncertainty of objects provided that settler clearly intended the fund to go exclusively to the charity now when you highlight this part the intended fund to go exclusively to the charity then it will not the charitable trust will not fail for uncertainty even a trust fails the doctrine of cyprus will will be made to make the object more precise now there are two things we must consider here first thing is lack of certainty in relation to the beneficiary now we are seeing lack of certainty in relation to the object but different approach the lack of certainty in relation to the beneficiaries can be ignored even though section 6 requires as mandatory but in the case of charitable trust in the private trust the beneficiaries should be indicated clearly but in the case of charitable trust there is no such requirement the beneficiaries must be specified or indicated with uh, with certainty but the in the case of purpose of the trust or object of the trust 
if the settler clearly intended the fund should go to, go to the charity exclusively then it is a valid one even though there are some practical issues practical difficulties to execute then we can apply the doctrine of cyprus and give effect to the charitable trust that we will study a little later very clearly to constitute a valid trust it is necessary that its objects or the purposes are certain that we have seen in section 6 also to constitute a valid trust it is necessary that the that its objects or purpose are certain and the directions of the trust is are given in imperative terms if the testator leaves a discretion to the trustee to apply the fund charitable or non charitable purpose at his option then there is no valid trust created now the thing is here the very you must see very carefully here if the owner of the trust creates a trust for charitable purpose then it is valid but the trust but the, the owner of the trust creates a trust with the discretion to the trustee to apply the fund charitable or non charitable purpose at his option then it is not valid trust if it is charity then we can apply the Cy doctrine of cypress and we can give effect to that but if we don't know whether it is a charity or non charity then in that case that the trust is invalid it however does not mean that trust it cannot be given any discretion under charitable trust Chari first of all the discretion cannot be given to decide whether whether to apply the beneficial interest to the charity or non charity then there is no trust but if it is given to charity within which we can give the discretion to the trustee that's why here we say that it does not mean that trust cannot be given any discretion under charitable trust in manorama versus kalicharan 1904 it has been held that gift for a purpose which can be regarded as charitable or charity generally would be a valid trust because even though the wide discretion is given to the trustee now the clear idea is if the owner of the trust indicates this is for the benefit of this is for charity or charitable purpose then it is valid but if the owner of the trust indicates that it can be used for charity or non charity at the at the discretion of the trustee then it is not valid trust in ganaga ganaga bai was uh, charities was a cit the object of the trust were described in the deed of trust as religious charitable cultural and social all these main areas there but when you talk generally when you talk even religious matter is charity charitable also charity cultural also charity social matters also charity but it is not the case in the law of trust because section 99 is the deciding section whether it is charity or not now the, here the owner of the trust has given the given as as uh, given the money for the object of the trust it may be religious or charitable or cultural or social purpose there was no mention in the deed as to how the trust income was to be utilized 
Now say religious purpose 10 percentage, charitable purpose 5 percentage and social purpose 25 percentage, balance for the cultural purpose if it is indicated clearly then it is a valid trust, valid charitable trust. But it should be a charity specified in section 99.1 that we will see later. Now here there is no mandate that the income was to be spent on religious or charitable purpose. In these circumstances it was held that it was not possible to call out in clear terms any specific charitable or religious objects from the trust deed to conclude that trustee set up wholly for religious or charitable purpose. That's why here, because cultural purposes may be, may not be, that we don't know. Religious purpose, sometimes it may be private religious purpose, then we don't know. The first of all, if it is charitable purpose, if the trust created for charitable purpose or charity, that's fine. The trust is valid. But if you say that the trust is created for charitable or social or religious or cultural, then there is no concrete idea to utilize the fund. In that case, it is invalid. Where there is a specific intention to create the trust, charitable trust defined in section 99, uncertainty as to the manner in which the trust is to be administrated may be cured either by reference of section 99.2, that is the subsection 2 of 99, that's a Cyprus doctrine, and 100, that we will see. 101 subsection 1 paragraph E or paragraph A of subsection 1 of section 107 or by discretion given by trustee. These are the ways by which we can settle the administration of a trust. But as we have said two things we have studied now, if the beneficiary, in the case of beneficiary especially in relation to the charitable trust, there is no necessity to specifically mention the trust, sorry, beneficiaries. Section 6, even though section 6 of the trust ordinance requires to specify the beneficiaries with a reasonable certainty, but reality is in relation to the charitable trust, it is not applicable. Then second thing what we have seen, the purpose. If the purpose is for charity, then it is valid. If we are, if we are not in a position to identify, identify whether it is for charity or non-charity, then it is not a valid trust. It has been stated that purpose of the trust will fail if the purpose is not stated with sufficient certainty. This rule does not apply to charity. It does not matter that the charitable purpose is only vaguely stated or that no purpose is stated at all, thus the gift simply for charitable purpose as in Mogridge versus Tragwell, that will, the gift to A to dispose of to such charity as he shall think fit will be valid. Now here, the order of the trust clearly is indicated the purpose of trust is charity. But for which charity the trustee may decide. That's why he say that the charity, the gift to A to dispose of to such charity as he shall think fit 
then it is valid. In construing an instrument in circumstances where the settler intended to set up a charitable trust but did so ambiguously, if there is ambiguity in the matter, it does not matter. It is established for, the, for a benignant construction shall be given. The lenient construction must be given if possible. To as much as possible, we must give effect to the trust, not to defeat the trust. As we have seen at the beginning of this lecture, charitable trusts must have two distinct requirements. First one, it is for the charity and also it is for public benefit. When you, when you, if it is a charity for the private individual, then it can't be charitable trust. Charity in the sense, it is defined in subsection 1 of section 99 of the trust ordinance. Public benefit, it's a very clear idea. The charity for general public or section of general public, then only it is valid, it is known as charitable trust. When you see here, it is all, this is also for charity. Maybe the charity specified in subsection 1 of section 99 of the trust ordinance, but it is not for the public. It is for the individual's benefit. Suppose, author of the trust creates a trust for charity, but it is limited to the to his relations. The, in, the, in, in that case, it is not a charitable trust. Because when you say charitable trust, it should fulfill the two requirements known as charity as is specified in section 99.1 and also it is for the benefit of general public or section of general public. And the big issue here how to differentiate the big general public and section of general public from certain number of individual. If there is a connection between the author of the trust and the beneficiary then it is a private trust. It is a private trust. Suppose the trust, the author of the trust created trust for charity, but it is for the benefit of his relations or the place where he was uh, employed earlier or some other connection between the author of the trust and the beneficiary. Maybe on sometimes it may be on the blood connection or sometimes maybe employment employee or some other connection. In that case, it is known as private trust. Because the trust is created not to the general public or section of the general public, but it is for some specific group of people connected with the author of the trust. The charitable trust in section 99 may be explained by reference of section 3. Because of the words, unless the context or the subject matter otherwise implies. Now when you see that, when, when you see the interpretation given in section 3 of the trust ordinance, Beneficiary means when you see this section section 3 of the trust ordinance, it defines 
the beneficiary. Beneficiary must be a person or defined or definitely ascertainable class of person. This is a definition given as, as amended by Act number 6 of 2018. Beneficiary must be a person then charitable trust cannot be created for animals for the benefit of animal then beneficiary should be a person that's one thing or otherwise defined and definitely ascertainable class of persons if a trust is created for the relief of poverty how can we identify the number of poor people in Sri Lanka? That cannot be done. That's why when you see the umbrella clause here in section 3, it begins that unless the context or the subject matter otherwise implies, these are the definitions. Then section 99 requires different definition for beneficiary. You can't define beneficiary. As you have said in section 3, it is not applicable in the case of charitable trust. It is permitted because of the umbrella clauses unless the context or subject matter otherwise implies then this is a definition for beneficiary. Therefore, beneficiary must be a person that there is no there is no doubt at all, but defined and definitely ascertainable class of person that's a difficult matter in relation to the charitable trust. In the case of charitable trust, it may be for the for the advantages of poor people. Sometimes it may be for the religious. Uh, for the advancement of religion or religious practice or whatever or sometimes it may be to the education then how can we identify the beneficiaries of education or how can we identify the beneficiaries of the religion then it is impossible to identify then it in, in that case one can argue that it is inconsistent with the provisions of section 3 because section 3 defined section 3 defined the beneficiary who is known as beneficiary beneficiary must be a person and defined and definitely ascertainable class of person here in the charitable trust you can't identify the person that's why because of the umbrella clause at the beginning of section 3 it starts that unless context or subject matter otherwise implies therefore it is possible by way of in in the case of context or the subject matter that's a charitable trust the subject matter implies that some other way of definition for beneficiary therefore the definition given or the interpretation given in section 3 for the for the term of expression beneficiary can be modified by section 99 then we will see the dedication of trust or dedication to the trust Mere declaration of trust or the execution of deed is not enough to constitute a valid endowment. It is necessary for the validity of the deed that the executor should divest himself of the property. Whether he had done or not is to be determined by the subsequent act or conduct. Even when you see section 6 of the trust ordinance, there is a hanging provision within the bracket. Unless trust is declared by will, 
who author of the trust is himself to be a trustee transfers the trans, uh, trust property to the trustee then there is a mandatory requirement in relation to the immoral property such property should be transferred to the trustee there are two circumstances given unless it is declared by will or author of the trust is himself to be a trustee except those two cases upon the execution of deed of trust the immoral property should be transferred or the trust property should be transferred to the trustee the same thing given in this case also the mere declaration of trust or the execution of deed is not enough to constitute a valid trust or valid endowment it is necessary for the validity of the deed that the executor should divest himself of the property whether he had he had done or not is to be determined by subsequent acts or conduct in order to or in order that the dedication must be real the following are essential requirement then how to decide we have said conduct or the acts the subject matter of the dedication must be specific and well defined when you say that in moral property then the schedule must be there to define and describe the property the words employed in dedicating the property for endowment must be unambiguous and must be certain in other way it is it should be very clear the object of the chari charity should be certain that we have seen there should not be any doubt whether it is for charity or not it should be for the charity the dedication should be made but uh, by an unambiguous expression of intention to divest once a valid trust has been created the subsequent conduct of the founder contrary to the dedication cannot invalidate or affect the trust as we have seen in other case also if a person created a trust forever he can withdraw the capital fund because it is forever then you can't withdraw the fund the same way here once the valid trust has been created the subsequent conduct of the founder contrary to the dedication cannot be invalidate cannot be cannot invalidate or affect the trust if the trust has been validly created any deviation by founder of the trust would amount only to the breach of trust two things we must consider here the first thing is if there's a valid trust is created that is the end of it the founder cannot do anything against the trust the founder cannot invalidate such trust or the cannot uh, the the founder cannot do anything affecting such trust the first thing the second thing what we have seen here if he does something against the deed of trust it amounts to the breach of trust now we will see de facto trust as we have seen in the first slide here what we have seen trust may be created by way of de facto trusts section 107 provides that in dealing with any property alleged to be subject to charitable trust very very careful dealing with any property alleged to be subject to charitable trust court shall not be debarred 
from exercising any of its powers by the absence of evidence of formal constitution of trust by the absence of evidence of formal constitution of trust if it shall be of the opinion from all circumstances of the case that a trust in fact exists or ought to be deemed to exist then trust is created then, then when you see this section in detail say suppose there is a property maybe temple property but we don't know whether there is a trust property may be given to the temple about 100 or 200 years ago then there should be a trust but there is nothing at all but the property is is subject to charitable trust but there is no document at all no creation of trust no deed of trust no transfer document deed of transfer at all then the court shall not debar from exercising any of its power by the absence of evidence of formal constitution of trust there is no such formal constitution of trust in the sense there must be a deed of trust in terms of section 5 and the deed of transfer and board of trustees terms and condition nothing is there in the absence of formal constitution of trust the court has the power to declare there is a trust if the court satisfies that from the circumstances of the case that the trust in fact exists or ought to be exist then court can declare that that is sub subject to trust the property is subject to trust or there is a trust or charitable trust but it is this section 107 does not apply in relation to the private trust as i told you earlier if the trust is for charity plus for the benefit of public or section of the general public then it is known as charitable trust in the case of charitable trust the court has the power to declare if there is a trust for charity but it is for the benefit of some individuals or the relations of the author of the trust then it is known as private trust in that case you can't apply de facto trust the court has no power to declare that it is there's a trust or not because very clearly said that in dealing with any property alleged to be charitable trust when you say charitable trust it should be charity and also it is for the benefit of public or section of the public then only next step we must we, mu we must find that whether there is a deed of trust whether there is a transfer document whether there is a board of trustees then all the matters section 6 we must see reasonable certainty of of the intention of the author of the trust trust property beneficiary all matters we must consider but here we no need to consider those matters but the property is there it is it is alleged to be subject to charitable trust but there is nothing known as formal requirements we don't have anything at all in that case court has the power to declare trust charitable trusts where these formalities had not been observed were nonetheless held to be valid because of section 107 section 107 appears 
to be introspective and has been assumed without argument to apply trust arising before 1918 because the trust ordinance came into operation in 1918 April 16 16th of April 19 18 that's why even the trust is created or trust is arising before 1918 doesn't matter the section 107 will it will be applicable now we will summarize what we have studied up to now can you see this summary of these uh, PowerPoint presentation that we have seen up to now. First of all, we have seen the creation of charitable trust. The trust, charitable trust may be created by way of express trust or by way of constructive trust or as we have seen now by way of de facto trust. The purpose of the trust always should be charity and also in addition to that even though the purpose of the trust is charity it may be charitable trust or may not be charitable trust because charitable trust must fulfill two distinct qualifications First one what we have seen that is for charity. The trust is created for charity at that also as specified in section 99 subsection 1. Those are the charities not anything else. In addition to that it is for the benefit of general public not for the individual or relations. If the trust is for charity, but it is for the benefit of individuals or relations, it is known as private trust. I would say that there is nothing known as non-charitable trust. Because when you say charitable trust, it should fulfill the requirements of charity as well as public benefit. If one of those requirements lacks then of course it is private trust. If suppose it is for the charity but not for the general or section of the general public then it is known as private trust and also we have seen rule against perpetuity there's a limitation there's a limitation to the private trust but in the case of charitable trust there is no such limitation or restriction of time it can go forever and also we have seen generally the charitable trusts in sri lanka are, li are liable to tax. In addition to that, beneficiary is also liable to tax on the income of the trust. But the distributions, uh, the, the distributions of resident trust shall be exempted. Then the, now thereafter we have seen the certainty matters. As it is specified in section 6 of the trust ordinance reasonable certainty of matters required but anyway in the case of charitable trust especially in relation to the certainty of beneficiary is is not a mandate requirement 
because section 3 says the umbrella clause says unless the context requires otherwise therefore section 99 requires differently therefore whatever the uh, definition given in section 3 shall not be applicable in the case of charitable trust in relation to the beneficiary the purpose of the trust also we have seen the purpose of the trust here must be for charity if we are unable to identify whether the purpose is charity or non-charity then it is invalid If the trust is created for charity, but we don't know which charity, whether it is for the promotion of education or advancement of religion or relief of poverty that we don't know. In that case, even though it is valid because by way of applying doctrine of Cypress, we, we can give effect to the trust. Then finally, we have seen the dedication to the trust that we have as it is in section 6. Always, unless this two set situation given in section 6, the property, especially the immoral property, should be transferred to trustee unless trust is declared by will or the author of the trust himself to be a trustee the trust property should be transferred to trustee finally we have seen de facto trust in dealing with any property alleged to be charitable trust in Sri Lanka it is a big issue in, in the charitable trust especially in relation to the religious charitable trust or religious trust there are properties given to the temple but nobody knows whether it is subject to trust in that case the best idea to ask the court to declare that it is subject to trust for that purpose we can apply the provisions of section 107 which provides that the dealing in dealing with any property alleged to be charitable trust court shall not be debarred from exercising any of its powers by the absence of evidence of form, uh, formal constitution of trust because we don't have any document or deed of trust or deed of trans or any other document to prove the formal constitution of trust therefore in the absence of evidence of any formal constitution of trust the court has the power to declare if the court satisfied that from the circumstances there's a trust then the court can uh, declare that property is subject to trust and also we have seen finally the section 107 appears to be retrospective and has been assumed without argument to apply the trust arising before 1918 that means before the trust ordinance came into operation now we have seen the outline of the trust and also we have seen a charitable trust and also we have seen the charitable trust when you say charitable trust it should fulfill two distinct qualifications charity charity in the sense that is defined in section 99 1 and also we have seen public benefit now we must go in detail what is known as charity that's the next step we must study 
now we will stop with this one this lecture now and we will continue this one with the definition of charity thank you very much